Okay, continuing with our HTML5 Canvas tutorials here. Uh, once again, as I keep mentioning in these videos, this is part of a series. There should be a playlist. Uh, there should be an annotation on the screen to a playlist. Uh, if you haven't watched the earlier videos, you may want to check them out because as you can see, we already have some code written out. Uh, let's quickly review the code that is here. Uh, in the last tutorial, we added some styling tags to remove the margin for the and the padding to remove the white border around our body. That way, our canvas is in the top left corner. Obviously, you may not want it in the top left corner, but that's what I was going for in the tutorial. So we're setting the margin and the padding for um, to zero pixels, making sure that the body, which is where the canvas element is, um, is in the top left corner all the way. We also have our canvas element, uh, element right here. It has an ID of my canvas with a capital C. It doesn't have to be that. You can call it whatever you'd like within reason. And uh, But remember, it is case sensitive in the fact that when you use it elsewhere, like here, it has to match whatever you put there. I also gave it a, a pretty decent size of uh, 1200 uh, by 800 uh, pixels. So 800 or 1200 wide by 800 tall. And um, then we start our JavaScript here. In our script here, we're creating a variable, which is looking at our canvas element. And then we're getting the context of that, and uh, we're making sure it's 2D. We're setting it to 2D because we're working with 2D here. And um, then we're going to create a image object. It is a new image, so we're just calling that function there to create an object, an image object. Now we're saying when the image is loaded, we're going to run this function, which right now only has one command, and that command is to get the context of our canvas and draw to it. What are we going to draw to it? We're going to draw an image that, is, that we've created here, and we're going to draw it in the top left because we're going zero pixels by zero pixels. What image is it going to draw? Well, we're setting the image that we've created, its source to uh, uh, image of my daughter. It's in the current directory, same directory as our HTML code here. So. We don't have to put the full URL, we just have a relative one of ember.jpg. And what does that give us? It, that gives us this here. So that's a review of last time. Uh, well, at the end of last time, we ended up doing two images. Well, now we're just going to work with one, and we're going to work on resizing. As I said right here, when we draw the image to our canvas, we're drawing this image at zero pixels by zero pixels so you can once again move that around if you don't want it in the top left but if we do some more commas here we can say comma uh, 200 comma 300 and that will resize the image to 200 pixels by 300 pixels which is going to distort our image because if you look at our original here whoops it is a 637 by 897 um, ratio there so it's going to be a little distorted in this case but we'll save that refresh up here and there's the image not too distorted because the per, uh, percentages aren't too far off but if I set this uh, to we'll say 500 and we reload you can see that I've now stretched out the width uh, to 500 and of course we can continue moving that up we can say 800 and really start stretching it out and we can also shrink this one down, squish it up a little bit more, like so. So that that's resizing an image. Um, obviously, you could also, you know, do percentages, you know, of the uh, entire canvas or the image itself. We'll get into that in a little bit. We're actually going to be looking at some taking the canvas width and height and working with that now. Uh, resizing is easy. We're going to get into cropping here, uh, which gets a little more complex if you want to make sure you don't distort your picture and crop it properly and really it's just adding more values into this draw function here uh, but instead of just writing those numbers in there we're going to actually create some variables and that makes it easier for later on if you want to change them plus we're going to be calculating a few things here uh, so let's go ahead and uh, let's put this actually inside our function here we're going to say, we're going to create a variable, we'll call it source, and we'll set our source, um, sorry, source x to, we'll just say 100 for now. We'll set our source uh, uh, y equal to 0, 
And we're going to play with these numbers in a little bit so you can see what they do, but let's just create the variables for now. And once again, we're creating these variables and we're giving them names, um, but these names uh, don't have to be, you know, this doesn't have to be source X or source Y or source W. That's what we're calling them. Uh, so do what's relative to your project. Um, so here we're going to create source width variable and we're going to say source uh, h for height we'll say 150 for that we're going to once again be changing a lot of these soon let's uh, go ahead and make this full screen for right now and uh, next we're going to create a variable called test w uh, for destination width uh, and instead of just putting a number in here we're going to set it equal to our source w this will help prevent distortion uh, obviously if you want to distort the image uh, aspect and ratio you wouldn't set them equal but if you don't want it distorted these two are going to be the same so we're going to set them the same and this is why using variables one of the reasons using variables is handy uh, rather than typing the same number in multiple times and if you change one you gotta change the other and if you miss it someplace it's just gonna cause problems um, so same for the destination height we want to set it equal to the source height so we're not distorting the image at all we're gonna say a variable and we'll say destination X and we're gonna say that, that is going to be the canvas dot width so what this is saying is, look at the canvas and whatever the width it is. In this case, it's it's 1,200 uh, pixels. Uh, and we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're going to divide that by two for now. So we're going to get the center, and then we're going to subtract destination width. What this uh, is doing is basically going to be centering our image. Um, on our canvas and we're actually going to play with that in a little bit here but basically if we were to if you've done any type of programming before where you're working with images uh, or anything visual you know that um, to center something you only have to get whatever your your canvas or whatever you're drawing on's width and divide it by half to move it to the center point if we want the X we need to also find that objects width and divide it by half otherwise the left side of the object is going to be at the center, not the center of our object. Hopefully that makes sense to you. If, like, again, if you've done anything visual like this before, you do understand it. If not, hopefully I'll uh, explain it better here momentarily, or at least demonstrate it a little bit better. Um, so we're going to go height uh, divided by 2, so our canvas height divided by 2, and we're going to subtract our destination and I put destination width there I'm going to put destination a w and h just trying to shorten things up I like to have my variable short divide that by two okay so now that we have all our variables let's input them into our function here so we still we're gonna have zero zero well no we're not gonna have zero zero we're going to have one hundred and zero so we're gonna have source x comma by source y once again it does the, the case does have to correspond since we have a capital Y and a capital X there we have to have a capital Y and capital W down here or you know what I'm saying uh, same thing H uh, then we're going to go and just give me a moment and I'll explain all this uh, actually want that to be our X uh, and this to be our Y and then we're going to go our uh, yes, W, that was correct, and our H, if I remember correctly. So, before we explain it, let's just look at it. We'll come up here, we'll refresh this page now, and you can see that we now have cropped our, our image and centered it. So real quick, just to get you, give you a better visual of it, I'm, gonna, I'm in Chrome here. I'm going to hit F12 to bring up our little console here. I'm going to click on the magnifying glass here. And now when I hover over objects, you'll be able to see them better. So you can see that the, our image is not only cropped, but centered directly in our canvas here. And once again, we, let's turn that off. We uh, not only need to find the canvas width, which is 1,200 pixels, and divide it by half, we also need to find our object, our images, uh, width, divide that by half and subtract that from that number. Because if 
we were to well once again let's let's let me show you here let's bring this down a little bit since we don't need all of it now so you can see it's centered it's right smack in the middle this is right about here it should be the middle of our canvas if I go back to our code here and I don't subtract the object our images width that's divided in half and I refresh up here and we look at our canvas you can see that it's not centered anymore because we didn't center the center of our object we are now centering the left side of our object at the center so this is the center but to get the center of the object we need to find the width of our object divided by half and subtract that from the canvas width divided by half uh, so I don't know how to better explain that play around with the numbers and you'll get it if you don't understand hopefully you'll get it um, so that that's what we're doing there uh, just to make things a little bit easier I and because of the size of our canvas I could resize our canvas which would probably be the easier way to go but you can also you know if I want it to be up in the uh, further top left of, of our uh, screen here, our canvas, I can divide it by fours. Well, I don't want to divide the width by four. It doesn't really matter. I'm not trying to line things up perfectly here. That moves it up a little bit. So it's no longer centered. I was just showing you that so you could know how to center it. Really, this should still be two to be proper. So now it's centered in the top left quadrant of our canvas. Anyway, let's play with these numbers some so you understand the other parts of it. So once we have all this set, obviously the X and Y destination is going to be the top left of our image now, which can be a little confusing. Confused me very much at first. And now our source, X and Y, which originally was our top left of our image, now kind of subtracts or moves over so even though said this the way I'm viewing this and I'm going to explain it this way because it's the way I understand it let's just quickly look at it so we have this image you can see that part right there I'm going to change this from 100 to 110 save it and refresh and you'll see the image move to the left not the image but where it's cropped boom so for me I'm thinking I'm thinking of this as more of a negative 110. I'm thinking of this as my starting point, and now I'm subtracting 110 and pulling the image over that way. So that, that's how I'm thinking about it in my head. And if we were to change this Y, we can change that to 10, save it. And now our image within our crop box, so the crop box is not going to move, but our image is going to move up 10 pixels up, which is, in my mind, once again, really is negative. I, don't, I think it's kind of weird the way they did this, but boom, it moved up a little bit. So let's go ahead and uh, type in like 350 here and 200 here. And that's going to move it uh, 350 pixels over and 200 pixels up. And now we're looking at my daughter's eyes. And uh, so now let's see. Uh, let's move this instead of 350. Let's go 320. So now we're out of our eyes there. I kind of like the height. I want to crop over a little bit more, get the other eye. So now I can come down here to the width. Let's change this to 200. There we go. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Uh, we'll go 250. So understanding this is really just playing around with it. But basically, the destination X and Y is once it's cropped, consider that a new image, and that's the left and right, or top and left of our image. Um, the width, the source width and the source, hi source height, you want the same because if they're not, so let's say our source width is 250. Let's say we change our source, our uh, destination width to 200. So it's a little different and we refresh this, you can see it's now squished our image and so if you don't want that distortion, let's set it to 20, you can see it still has that full image in there, it's just squishing it. So if you don't want any image distortion, you're going to want to have the destination width and the destination height equal to the destination, or the source width and the source height. Um, and once we save that and refresh up here, it goes back to that. So, destination X and Y is the top left of our image now that it's cropped the or the cropped image and then the source X and Y is basically pulling 
the image left and right out of the crop area. Um, and the source width and source height and the destination width and destination height uh, should be equal, once again, if you don't want any distortion. Uh, and that's how much of the image we're going to be seeing left, right, up, and down. I really hope I explained that well because um, I understand it, but I do find it a little confusing. I really think that these should be negative numbers because I feel like we're moving, like this is the beginning here, and we're moving that way, that it should be negative two or th two, uh, 320 and negative 200, but that's not how whoever designed this is thinking, and I'm sure they have reason. I'm sure they're probably more proper than I am. That's just how my mind's working. Real quick, um, let's just have a quick look at this. So, again, creating our canvas, getting its context, setting it to 2D, um, and where uh, we have our image object here, which is a new image. Then when the image is loaded, or our image object is loaded, we're going to grab our variables here and we're going to draw the image. What image are we going to draw? Well, image one, image one source, which is our image. So we put image here, it's going to look at the source of the image. So you have to make sure you have that set. And then it's going to input our variables here for the height, width, you know, positioning, cropping, all that stuff. So we look at sizing, cropping, and all that stuff. I hope you found this useful. I hope you, find, you look forward to future tutorials. Hope it wasn't too complicated and that I explained it well. And the next tutorial, we're going to look at a simplified way of um, loading more than one image. In our original uh, video on loading images, we um, loaded two, but we kind of just duplicated w what we had put in. Basically, like we copied and pasted this and renamed everything. It was image one to image two or whatever we want to call it. In the next tutorial, we're going to be looking at a function that we can create to shorten that up some. And again, I've mentioned in previous tutorials, I've learned the Canvas tutorials, uh, how to use the Canvas from tutorials on a website called html5canvastutorials.com. Uh, I'm not getting any kickbacks from there. I just want to give them credit because I've looked at other sites for Canvas tutorials and I found them confusing. And their site, it was very straightforward. Uh, you could edit the code right on the page, which made it nice in real time. And uh, my tutorials are going to be similar to theirs, so I want to give them credit because I'm looking at my notes based on on what I got from their site. Basically, I take their their tutorials, trim out excess stuff that I don't think I need to know for that specific job, and uh, maybe rename stuff or or move things around to make it more sense to me. But other than that, my tutorials are very similar to theirs. So. Uh, just want to give them credit for that. I thank you for watching. Uh, be sure to check out the playlist if you haven't. Hopefully there's an annotation on the screen if I didn't forget. And I hope that you have a great day.